Good morning. I've been getting a lot of questions about holding companies and operating agreements and operating agreements between nonprofits and profits and all of this stuff. One of the things, and excuse me if I'm being facetious, but some of y'all are way too ambitious because you don't have your first company set up yet you're trying to do all of this esoteric stuff. And first of all, my duty as a consultant is to ask you, why are you doing what you're doing? Because typically I get people who heard something and it sounds like something that's good and that's why they're doing it. Well, that may not apply to their situation. Typically, if you have a brand new business and you're not trying to work the nonprofit angle because, you know, there's nonprofit and there's not for profit and these companies make profit and typically how people get paid with is very high salaries from these institutions. Here at Hustlers Kung Fu, we're about the nonprofit sector. We're about making that money, making that Wi-Fi bread. So one of the things about creating and operating agreement is making sure and spelling out what people are doing, what's, you know, it, it's, once you know what to do, it's not that complicated. If you don't know what to do, it seems like Chinese arithmetic. But one of the things that I want to stress to you guys, get the damn company profitable. Without profit, none of this stuff means anything unless you have a bunch of assets. Make sure that your company is profitable before you try to do this esoteric stuff. Because let's say you want to run two or three nonprofits for tax benefits, but your company ain't really making that much money. You, you hustling backwards. So one of the things that you have to understand is the language of business, the intent of business. Gary Vee talks about this a lot. There are many, many businesses today that are seeking to be acquired. They're not really trying to become profitable and that's going to catch up with them sooner or later. One of the things that Amazon.com that has done and consistently has done has said, look, we will eschew short term profitability for long term stability, which means Amazon invests millions of dollars back into the company, making the brand stronger and stronger. That's a beautiful concept and that's a good thing. Uh, many of you who are asking me these questions don't even have businesses. And one of the things that uh, irks me is, I, well, you know, let's just go ahead and keep it a buck. The name of the channel is Hustlers Kung Fu. And everybody uh, thinks themselves to be a supreme hustler. And you can't be a supreme hustler without no results. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do going forward is to call accountability because a lot of people want to ask me a bunch of questions and it's like, Hey man, you know, I, I just got this question, but I, I understand you have a question, understand, but my time is extremely valuable and I treat it as such. Uh, typically I'm not going to get into the details and the dirty because that's called consulting. And many of y'all, and I'm thinking about putting together something like a, a business boot camp, because there, there's so many of y'all who are confused, um, uncertain, don't like the, the operating agreement and the holding company. You know, many of you have started businesses and you didn't know about the holding company, the operating company deal that Amazon, Apple, all the big boys are doing, you didn't know about that. And now you're trying to reverse engineer it. And one of the things that you can do it, 
But it depends on how far down the pike you've come. Because if you file taxes for this company, then all of a sudden you're no longer filing taxes for this company. That may bring up an audit. So it just depends on what you have done and how far you've gone down. Uh, my recommendation would be to start all over and do it correctly from jump because once you start going back trying to backdate and trying to effectively make this stuff easier, one mistake can cost you thousands of thousands of dollars in taxes or missed income or something. Just one little mistake. So part of this is, you know, if you, you have a, you know, go create an operating company and you have an older company that you want to bring into operating company, my recommendation would be was for you to turn that older company that's already filed taxes into the operating company, into the holding company, and then create an additional operating company off of that old company because you've got the corporate age and you've got all this other stuff. But once again, understand that if you're not well versed in this, this is kind of confusing and you don't want to make a mistake, and I, I get that. So one of the things that you should do is go ahead, get the art of holding. It's below, go ahead and grab that, and start doing this stuff the correct way, because your intent's to make a lot of money. L let me just go ahead and just explain some stuff to you that no attorney, legal zooms, not ever gonna say. Most of this stuff is situated, predicated on the fact that you're never gonna make any money. Yeah, this is, this is an industry, uh, industry secret. Like LegalZoom, these LLCs and stuff, uh, they know that potentially the chances of you making big money, six figures up to seven figures, are slim to none. They know this, like, uh, Great parallel, shared hosting. And this is something that I found out, that the reason shared hosting is so cheap is they don't really expect you to use it. When Urban Pack Rat started using a lot of bandwidth, my site disappeared. It's like, well, you've exceeded your allocated bandwidth. I was like, I thought it was unlimited. And I was like, read the fine prints. And I had to get a dedicated server to handle the traffic. And that's the way that these LLCs are set up. They're not there to protect you in the event you're making real money, building real assets, because they don't expect for you to make any money. And statistically, they can play this game because one of the things that everyone is doing, and some of the states are pushing back, is you have to be creative in writing your articles of incorporation. And what I'm gonna do is a class. I'm gonna, you know, how to write your operating agreement, how to write your articles of incorporation. I'm gonna do a class, I'm gonna link it below where you can buy into it, and I'm going to start setting this up because this is the language of freedom. I want you guys to make money. I want you guys to have profitable companies. And the first leg into that is the right mindset. And then the second leg is that is the right information. Like LegalZoom and, you know, these attorneys that will charge you 600 bucks for an LLC. You know, these are some weak LLCs. They weak and they will not withstand serious scrutiny once you start making some money. And here's the thing, once you start making big money, once you get to a million, two, three, four, five million dollars a year, you're not gonna have uh, issues of whether you're sued or challenged or people trying to steal from you. It will be a matter of when, because, you know, bank robbers rob banks because that's where the money is, right? So the more successful that you become, the greater chance of you becoming a target. And if you're starting an online business, the, your options are so wide and open. And if you're starting a physical business, or you're gonna have a location, or you're, you're doing something, 
where you've got to interact, interact with the state, then that's a whole nother ball game. But once again, uh, I'm going to create a course to teach you how to write in a manner because, you know, many of you will like say, hey, in Articles of Corporation, is there a copy of the operating agreement, something that we can just copy and paste? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Your operating agreement, your articles of organization should be specific to your company. There is no general template or, or broadband thing because typically that will create a weak LLC. So, you know, your articles should be very much tied to what you do and what your intent is and how far you want to go with your company. Because I guarantee you, Apple, Amazon, IBM, they didn't go to LegalZoom to get their legal structure set up. They went to a reputable law firm and they spent some big money getting this stuff set up because typically they know they're going to make money. They know they're going to have challenges so that their LLC and holding company structure has to or incorporation because a lot of these companies are incorporate or corporate incorporation because they're selling shares. They're, they went public. And this is something else, too, that I haven't talked about because most of you are never going public. Uh, but in case you do, if your intentions are to get this company, you, you're going to have to do a traditional corporation, not an LLC, because this way you can issue shares and class of stocks and all this other stuff. So that's something for you guys who want to go public someday. And public is a way to raise a lot of money very quickly. A lot of money because you're selling equity of the company for stock shares. And this is why Bezos owns X percent of Amazon. He retained a lot of the stock. And, you know, now McKinsey, she's got a lot of the stock. And it's very interesting. <clears throat> I want you to think to be so wealthy that you could lose $36 billion. It, it don't matter. You didn't even blink. It, it, it didn't even change your life. $36 billion. Didn't even change your life. But anyway, that's another case. And also, with the Hustlers LLC, and, you know, just to talk about the differences between the art of holding. The art of holding is general business stuff. The Hustlers LLC is set up for men. And, you know, I had someone up here and like ladies, once again, you know, 98, 99% of the traffic of this channel viewers are men. So I'm not really doing anything for you. And like, um, because I refuse to change up my language to speak to the few of you who do watch, um, stop it, stop it. Someone put up there, you know, this should be for the woman that wants to protect herself from poor men. You know, the average man doesn't even go after a woman in divorce. The average man, he don't even do all that. So it has been men systematically, historically, who have been screwed over in divorce in child support court to the point that it has become heinous, not women. I myself, the reason I started this channel, the reason that I speak this way to men is I got screwed royally and I'm a dude and there are many other dudes. I, I know dude after dude after dude who got screwed royally from these things. So ladies, take a chill pill because, you know, if you can find benefit of this channel, awesome, great, wonderful. You're welcome to it. But don't be telling me what I should be doing for y'all because I am in the corner for the fellas because I have a pair and I understand what they're going through and no one seems to care about the problems of men. You know, you might care if it's your brother or your dad or something, you know, you might care, but at whole, you know, we, we just don't system isn't set up for a man who gets in financial trouble. You a man, you need to go out and work. You need to go tote some bricks. You need to go work in the landfill. You, you a man, you can do this. Whereas women, we have all kinds of options that help for y'all. So I am the help. I am the big brother. I am the uncle. I'm the dad. I'm the grandfather. I'm the father of many of these dudes 
who have no one to come to, no one to talk to. So that's why I put it out here. And that's why I created the Hustlers LLC because I learned some stuff in the course of my business, how corporate law can trump family law. And I was like, whoa, this is powerful because they ain't gonna mess with corporate law. Corporate law, the Vanderbilts, the Melangies, the all these old, old families with all this money and power, I'm, they ain't messing with them. No, 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 no. And to the men who activate, because the Hustlers LLC is very much for a man that wants to protect his future wealth. There's things that are set up in there for you to protect you, to help you weather any kind of storm. So if you, you get divorced, you don't start losing some stuff. And for many business owners, you need the Hustlers LLC because you own a business and you get a divorce. What the courts may do to your business can actually literally put you out of business. And no one talks about this because there are not that many people who are really, really getting into this because essentially if you have a business and your wife decides to divorce you and this business was started and maintained and grew as a product of the marriage, whether she lifted a finger or not, she's entitled to whatever your state's law says she's entitled to. And if the case of half and your business is worth 10 million and you got to get her 5 million cash, guess what player? you may be forced by the courts to liquidate your business to satisfy her. Whereas she gets her 5 million, you go, you get nothing and you don't have the business no more. This happens. This happens to men. This don't happen to women because women historically don't have businesses. Women historically are not making that kind of money. So this is a very real thing. And this is what you need to do because getting money, is a wonderful and awesome thing. And you got to protect yourself because there's so many people who want a piece of the pie. There are so many people who want to be part of your success, but they weren't on that journey. They weren't there doing the cold, lonely, dark days, but they want, they want that, that money. And, you know, since we live in the United States of America and the rule of law and the way that the marriage laws are set up right now, that many women want to marry you and don't want to sign no prenup. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. We in this forever. And if we ain't in this forever, I want to ensure that I can get my rights to clean you out. Uh, once again, uh, you know, Google business owners divorces, forcing them to sell their business. Because once you get these court orders and, you know, contempt of court, you go to jail. There's dudes who go to jail because they didn't follow court orders. And, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, there's a court order for you to get your kid. But until recently, the last few years, they weren't putting women in jail for contempt of court. They just didn't want to do it. Now they're doing it. So if you know you got visitation papers and she's withholding you can actually take the police to her house that day and have her arrested. And this is relatively a new thing, but typically we're on a journey gentlemen of economic empowerment and fulfillment. And you're going to need these corporate laws, which were put in place. So you to protect yourself, the game is set up and is designed for business owners. That's how the game is set up. It is designed for business owners and the way for you to win is to play that game. Once you start playing that game, there are so many things. There's so many things that become available to you that are open to you. So many things you can do. And so, you know, we're, we're going to have a class on how to write this stuff up because once again, you know, I'm going to teach you guys how to do it the right way and how to withstand scrutiny, how to withstand lawsuits, because essentially, you know, if you could set this up the way, cause you know, we'll get into that in the class, but essentially you should do everything you can to avoid lawsuits. But if they come, you want to be protected because there's something called a charging order. 
and there are some states that limit what people can do in law states. You know, each state has different laws. And what I like to do is to set it up where to protect the money. Because typically, you know, if you're in a high risk business, such as drilling oil or something, you should have the appropriate insurance because people and workers comp and stuff like that. But typically, if you're in a cash business, like an internet business where it's just making cash, uh, typically your liability is often much lower. Unless you're doing cosmetics and people putting stuff on their skin and something goes wrong, that can literally put you out of business overnight. But you want to make sure all of that damage is contained within the business and it doesn't bleed out over into your personal life. Because what you should be doing, once your business start, start, starts making money, you should be taking that business, that money out your business and putting it somewhere else where the money is working. Because typically this is how a lot of these people around here in my old neighborhood, this is how they retired so well. Well, they were making that active money they put it into passive income sources, which enable them to live in these multi-million dollar houses in retirement. That's what I'm talking about. That's where I want you guys to be. And, you know, get your business up to a certain level, then take that business and put it into investments, that business money. Because uh, essentially what I'm getting ready to do toward the end of the year is take 70% of the profits and invest that. So that's what's going to, you know, my deal is going to be real estate. So one of the things you should understand is how money works and how to preserve your capital, how to preserve your wealth. And these articles of organization and these holding companies, once again, there, there's nothing you can just copy and paste. You know, I'm going to teach you how to write the appropriate articles of organization and operating agreements for your company. You guys have got to start getting specific. You guys have got to break it down to what you're doing. If you are in a taxi service business, that's what your articles of organization should reflect. If you're in the courier business, if you're in the freight business, this should be in your articles to make it damn near impossible to pierce the corporate veil. You should have your checking accounts set up. You should have all of your allocations set up. So you're protected. Your, your stuff is bulletproof. And these are the things that we're going to talk about. So once again, you know, uh, I appreciate the questions and stuff. But don't ask me five or six questions on a low key consult. Go ahead and buy the course. If you need time, go get a consult. You know, it's 1500 bucks for three calls and we will walk you through the process. We will set you up and I'll talk to you because once again, everybody wants to talk to me. And once again, you know, whether you respect my time enough, I respect my time. And it's going to cost to have a conversation about your business. And once again, people who have businesses who are making money don't really seem to matter. They don't really, hey, it's okay, it's cool. Bam, they pay that money, not a problem. But the folks who are BSing, playing around, don't have no real business, don't have no cash flow. It's like, yeah, that's coming out of my money. That's coming out of my play money. I can't go to Florida with Big Booty Betty. I understand. Uh, I'm looking for people who want to invest in themselves and invest in their business because, you know, we're getting ready to do some stuff way different here and you will see it and you will see the big change. So for those of you who need your corporate, you know, like I said, I think every man needs to hustle his LLC. Every man needs a business. The stuff, the links are below and uh, I will be doing a how to write these articles of organization and holding operating agreements and stuff, how to write this stuff up and, you know, going through the scenarios of what you may experience. Cause typically if you're starting a regular business and you're not trying to do this esoteric stuff, uh, I remember somebody was talking to me about a company and he paid someone some money to set it up and everything. And I was just laughing cause he, he really didn't have to do that. 
But once again, once people get something in their head, they get it in their head. And I'm here to tell you the truth. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.